we create an atmosphere in the fitting room that is no judgments and it's a free place to create. Hopefully that shows up on the screen. I'm Molly Rogers and I costume design and just like that. And I'm Danny Santiago, co-costume designer. This was something that was scripted for the first episode that Carrie's gonna go to the Met Ball and that she needs to last minute come up with something. This is a funny story about uh, some of these pieces that are on here because, you know, we hadn't seen the bird in a while and we had to make sure that that was still alive and well and it was secure because it's very, very fragile. It's over a hundred years old as well as the Vivian Westwood, we didn't know what condition it was going to be in and they sent it to us and it ended up fitting beautifully on her. We just needed to make a couple of alterations to it. This cape actually started off as a ball gown in real life, but it was such a beautiful color and it matched the feathers so well on the headpiece that we just thought we're never going to find that. We sourced fabrics and we always kept coming back to this ball gown and saying how amazing it was. And then we got the idea to sort of turn this ball gown into a cape. There's a little Easter egg in this outfit. We threw a little pin cushion on her wrist as a bracelet. We took it off of smoke when she was trying to fix her dress that didn't make it to the ball and put it on Sarah Jessica's wrist. And it was really like a little, little moment that, you know, with these viewers, they see everything. We had gone the summer before to the Valentino Couture show in Rome. And this was a headpiece that we saw go down the runway on the steps. And the dress was actually from a different look in a different color and we, loved what it was doing in the show because it had that beautiful flow to it. And we thought how great this would be if it had that extended train, knowing what it needed to do going across the street. So we reached out to Valentino and asked, is it possible that we could get this amazing look? But not only in that, can we match it to that beautiful headpiece that they showed in the runway? and they did this for us special and made this beautiful, beautiful couture piece for us with this extended, extended train. It must have been about 12 feet long, you know, so when he is carrying it across, she's got this billowy fabric going almost completely across the street with it. And it just really was such a beautiful moment and so LTW, you know, in every sense. I was really, really excited about this because you know, red is the house of Valentino. And to have that catwalking across Park Avenue, <laughs> I think was a real feather bird in our cap, so to speak, for Danny and I. It was a real moment. We were in that infamous Sawgrass Fort Lauderdale outlet mall, and we saw that color on the back of a rack in Balmain. It is her color. She owns that color on the show. It's that slinky, copper, goldish, tarnished green that she wears so well. We grabbed it and called Paris and said, what other colors does it come in? And we thought about it. And Danny was insistent, which I thought was a great idea, to throw a hood on her and give her kind of a Grace Jones, a little more drama. And we borrowed this massive amethyst from Lisa Eisner, who does absolutely beautiful jewelry for Tom Ford. And we borrowed it and we had to hold on to it because this scene shot over different months and someone wanted to buy it and we had to hoard it and yell and scream, no, we have to keep it. We found this beautiful Moogler Wolford bodysuit for Catwoman to make it more modern. And it would be something that Naya would have put in together, you know, with the, adding the ears and the mask and just coming up with something really sexy and beautiful. And it, it looked so incredible on her. We had a couple different options, but when we tried this on her, that was, that was it. I mean, just the way that it fit and just the way it was all cut out was incredible for her. 
The Helen Gurley Brown, you know, was something that Carrie, again, didn't have a costume necessarily. It would have been something she would have put together from pieces she had in her closet. And, you know, being a writer and Helen Gurley Brown, you know, like just that reference to her, I think is something that she would have loved to have played off of. And, you know, even to the pocketbook that she carried of the Cosmopolitan, we just thought it was just a great little nod. And if somebody would pick that up, you know, it was a little Easter egg for us to sort of get a giggle off of. This was a Montclair Valentino collaboration. It was a favorite of mine. I, I saved that photo from that time. It's actually three pieces. It's the skirt, a jacket, and a hood, but it kind of appears like it's all one piece the way that it looks. It looks like it's a coat dress, actually. We carry things through, like the flowers that didn't make it into season one get into season two. And yeah. we were really excited about putting a massive oversized puffy coat on her during the Paris bridge scene in the finale with big ashes on the bridge. But those beautiful sleeves on that Valentino couture gown, we were like, well, this isn't our chance. You know, you really have to pick and choose. And then lo and behold, season two, there's a bomb cyclone. You get your chance for your drama puffy gown by someone having the brains to write a bomb cyclone. It does weigh a lot. That has yards and yards and yards of fabric in it and quilting inside of that skirt. And it was made for, you know, a five foot 11 uh, model. So, you know, we weren't sure how that was gonna work on Sarah Jessica and she tried it on. And as always, she can wear anything and knows exactly how to wear an outfit and how to carry it. It was such a magical moment for me. It was actually one of my favorite looks from the season. This was such an amazing look also. And, you know, this was something that it's many different pieces that we combined together. You know, the hat is Roger Vivier that we had gotten. The Balcava came from a small designer that's completely rhinestoned. It's in jet beads. The sweater underneath was from Christian Dior that we bought at a vintage store in Paris that we got. And the um, Balmain poncho cape that we have, we got it at the outlet mall down in Sawgrass Mills in Florida. You want some great coats on sale? You need to come to Florida. It just all worked, you know, the whole thing just worked and it was gonna look gorgeous and so LTW, you know, she's our girl that can wear bold and color and very graphic type of things and it was just perfect for her. When I see this picture, I think everybody was in love with one half of the photo and everybody was really split about the other half of the photo. And those are the kind of things that happen on set. John, I felt like wanted to not be open in the coat. And I felt like he wanted to be protective, you know, which is why he buttoned it up and belted it. I think it helped him be guarded in a way. That's how I saw it. The um, jury, the court, the Coliseum that we live and buy, li live and die by, you know, felt like he. It just they saw it as too military or something. But those things are choices, and I'm behind them usually. First of all, there were hundreds of jackets. He wanted to look lived in and comfortable and not, of course, not a designer, designer label. And I think because he had personally in life worn a bell staff, it's very popular with sexy men, that jacket. It is a racing jacket, which his character does not do. But I've, a lot of leading men like that. It's slimming. It's kind of oiled, right, Danny? Yeah, it's like a it's like a wax fabric that's oiled, so it holds up to the wear of it. And a lot of people use it for racing, and it 
repels water and things like that. So there's a certain ruggedness to it. And it's, I think in a way it would be his every his everyday coat, you know, it would be something that wasn't so precious that still had a little bit of wear to it, but it wasn't something that he would specifically get dressed up for. It's something that he has in his wardrobe and he wears it in the sense like how someone would wear their jean jacket or something like that, or a motorcycle jacket, you know, like a leather jacket. It's something that more became of a personal piece of clothing. We crystalled her Christian Siriano dress with these tiny little pinpoint black crystals, thinking of the stoop under the street lamp. And so in my mind, I thought he would have a shininess to him at the stoop that I liked, that you're not going to get unless you're standing there in leather, which isn't his character. We've been on that stoop so often, we know what needs to tinkle dinkle you know it's we love to give a little fantasy touch to that stoop and he opened it up at the uh, on the stoop which i think showed that they'd had a nice dinner and he was thinking about a kiss and on and on this was a beautiful vintage coat that we had gotten but we wanted to make it a little more special and the panel on the bottom didn't end up making it in the scene, but this panel was from the year before. Molly came up with the idea of placing the flowers in the hood. You know, it's just, it's, it's, it's a call to what Carrie does. There's a little bit of whimsy to it. And of course, you know, those beautiful, delicate flowers and how they were going to look, you know, in the light and all that sort of stuff. I thought it looked beautiful and that it played so well, but, um, when we showed it, MPK, I think, found that the ones on the bottom, the panel just was a little too much. And he didn't want to take that much attention off of what the scene was going to be playing out. So we removed the bottom panel and just kept the ones in the hood in. Again, you know, this is also playing to the script. We needed the dress to sort of have a certain silhouette. She's thinking that she might be gaining a little bit of weight and that she wasn't necessarily 100% comfortable with the way that things were fitting her. So this was a dress that she fell in love with in a store and she really thought it would be appropriate for her new job. And when she goes to try it on and she puts the belt on, well, the belt just pulls a little bit and just giving her a little fullness that she notices and she starts to think, oh, am I, you know, am I gaining weight? you know, I'm going through menopause, my body is changing, and she's starting to think more about and become a little self-conscious about this. Um, and then everybody keeps telling her, well, just take the belt off, you know? But she really wants to wear it the way that it was meant to be worn. It's something that she's dealing with in her head, and she ends up going to the gallery and realizing that, you know, we have all shapes and sizes, and people are very comfortable in their clothes, and that she should maybe you know, not be so hard on herself about the way things are fitting her or how her body is changing. I think any woman that's re-entering the workforce at a certain age or with leaving kids behind at, at, at home and in school, I think it was um, just a nice plot point to touch on. Like, I'm going back to work. It's been a while. Where do I fit into all this? How do I do it all? That's a common thread in women's lives. I was really happy. I know Danny was as well. That Kristen was like, I'm going to need some padding. I really want people to see my lump, lady lumps because I don't want it to look like I've pushed my stomach out or whatever. I really, I really want to do this storyline um, justice. It really came together, didn't it, Danny? It did, it did. And what a beautiful place to feature that in that all, you know, white apartment, you know, all bare with these girls in these amazing outfits, you know, and each one very much in their lane of, who these characters are. You know, a big poofy sleeve on Kristen with that high sassy ponytail, and that's an Oscar de la Renta dress and matching bag that will be in stores in the fall. 
So that was wonderful that they got us that dress off the assembly line so we could shoot it so long ago. And Carrie's is a little nod to Bill Cunningham, the fashion photographer. He always wore some form of a French blue workman's jacket. That's not the first time she's wore a French blue workman's, you know, it's their uniform over there in France. And I think the hubbub about Miranda, you know, I've been looking online and everybody, oh, thank God she's back. Miranda, she's back. Well, she's been a student. So why would we have ever put her in a suit on campus at Columbia? I think sometimes people forget that we follow a script. We're not, we are a fashion magazine, but we do have um, plot points. And I think they just got really excited. You know, it just threw them back in time when she was a corporate lawyer, I think. I mean, put that in a time capsule and open it up 50 years from now. And I would say it's gonna hold up classic carry. And all those pieces came from all over and we stole those shoes from Kristen. <laughs> yes, we did. Um, <laughs> we went to Charlotte's closet. Danny ran over there. He's notorious for stealing from <laughs> other characters. I you go know, digging in their in closet the, sometimes. If it's not in the room, you need it. We're fitting them. So go and pilfer. The dress is philosophy. The hat, Danny found this wonderful straw beret by Gigi Burris, millinery. Danny had seen this in her showroom and he knew there would be a spot for this. Yeah. And that little crazy jacket, it's like a children's size. I think the show is such a unicorn because it's had such a long shelf life. When are you ever gonna be on anything that has such a legacy? And we just love to create and we really make this really comfortable and very open place that we can try on and play and and make really wonderful looks and we just concentrate on doing things that we love you know we don't pay too much attention outside of that <laughs>